obviously since February 24th, we've seen a lot of assets frozen, yachts, uh, real estate, bank accounts. Uh, again, is this a better late than never uh, where finally, uh, you know, the, the trails of dark money and the use of shell companies and third party intermediaries to acquire property and assets in the West were, were finally going after? Or uh, again, is this sort of episodic uh, and that, you know, maybe a specific Russian oligarch loses a yacht, but the system that allowed him or her to get the yacht in the first place mm -hmm. isn't really going to be be tampered with. I, I'm I'm afraid to say that that I don't think I don't see any structural changes to how all this stuff works. I mean, yes, now we're all sort of waking up to the fact that you know money laundering is connected to blood, violence, and death, um, which I knew. I tried to explain to other people; they didn't want to think about it. Um, and um, but the, 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 it's it's one thing to set up. You know, the U.S. has been very good about it. They set up the Klepto Capture Task Force. Um, and they're going after certain oligarchs. Um, but that's just, I mean, th that's sort of, as you say, episodic in the sense that, um, uh, you know, I think all countries should should have total transparency about ownership because um, then then you didn't ha you don't need a klepto capture task force from the Department of Justice. Everybody can see who owns what. And and if a government official owns something, then like, why do they own some big you know villa in the center of London kind of thing? And we don't have that. And, and um, here in the UK, I should point out that there has not been a single economic crimes prosecution mm -hmm. against a Russian in 22 years since Putin came to power. And London is the major hub of, of money laundering. A trillion dollars has been laundered out of, out of Russia since Putin came to power, and they've not done one single prosecution. And that tells me that, that major structural reforms need to happen here in the United States and elsewhere. Um, because it's one thing to like, you know, pick a few emblematic cases to sort of make a point, but it's another thing to create a system where it's hostile to money laundering. And, and for that matter, um, one of the big targets of my book, the name that, that I name is Dansky Bank. Dansky Bank is um, Denmark's largest bank. And Dansky Bank was responsible for laundering the money from the Magnitsky case. And it was responsible for laundering $230 billion of Russian money um, that came, dirty money that came out of Russia. And um, uh, not a single um, person has gone to jail, as far as I'm aware, from Dansky Bank. And if Dansky Bank people aren't going to jail, then other people who have laundered less money are probably even less likely to go to jail. And so it's, um, you know, people, people need to understand that, that if you do this kind of stuff, you should go to jail. And if they don't, um, you know, when, when they're starting to do the same type of money laundering for some other, you know, dictatorship or evil regime, um, uh, the, the, you know, the profits outweigh the, the costs or the risks. Yeah.